Nice to see you all. I wish I could uh, see you all in person. Hold on. You're muted, Mr. King. Now I think that's better. Thank you, Ms. Prasad, for letting me know that I was muted. Welcome everyone to the Town Hall for Cottonwood Oak Creek School District regarding our online program for the fall semester of 2020, going into 2021. I want to thank you all very much for coming here tonight and to pay attention to see what we're doing. We're going to be looking at some questions, um, going through those questions, answering them, showing you exactly what we're looking at doing for our online platform, and communicating to you the next steps that we are facing as a district. What I would first like to do is, uh, if you could all mute, I would, that'd be great. No, I'm just a little bit on track. Uh, and she dropped down. We have to And guess what? There we go. Okay. So the first thing I want to say is our district right now, like all districts across the country and across the world right now, are facing something that we've never seen before. It has been dramatic, it's been impactful. I'm sure all of you, to one degree or another, has been impacted. You're muted again, Mr. King. I, I keep getting muted, I apologize. I'm going to try to remain in, muted, unmuted, but uh, please do not mute me anymore, whoever's muting me. So. Let me start over, I apologize. I want everyone to hear exactly what I'm saying. Thank you all for coming here tonight to participate in this town hall about the reopening and the next steps for our district here in Cottonwood, Oak Creek. Our district consists of four schools, Cottonwood Community School, Dr. Daniel Bright School, Mountain View Prep, Oak Creek School, as well as our Cottonwood Education Services. Each one of those campuses and each one of our administrators and teachers have been working very, very hard over the past few months since the closure to create the most optimal learning environment for all of you moving forward so that we can serve our community to the best of our ability. Never before in the history of our district have we faced what we are facing currently. I do not want to underestimate or underplay exactly what the challenges we are facing. These are significant. These are deep. These are impactful. And I know that many of you have been impacted already by what we have seen going on in our community. Our district has recently been impacted in a very, very personal and deep way by the loss of one of our bus drivers. And as we look at the next steps we have to take, everything is going to be based around safety and getting the children back to school. All of us want that as our first priority. Tonight, I'm gonna to be sharing the plan that was presented to our school board and approved last Tuesday evening to you. And this will also be posted, we'll also be recording this. So if there are others out there that did not have a chance to view this, they will have that opportunity as well. We'll then be answering questions. And I, I do appreciate many of the questions that have come forth. We did ask people to submit those ahead of time. We've also been taking some more as they've been coming in. If you would like to submit additional questions, we will be putting those out and posting those publicly. You can also contact your building administrator. You can contact me personally if you have any questions moving forward. I hope much of the presentation that you see tonight will be answering those questions. There are some questions out there that we do not have the answers to yet. I will be very upfront with you about that. I don't think anybody does. The situations are continually changing. And right now, just so everyone is fully aware, we are under a closure order by Governor Ducey until August 17th. We do anticipate Governor Ducey to come out later on this week to let us know what the plans are moving forward. Everything we are doing and planning right now is looking towards that August 17th date for bringing children back to our campuses. But I do wanna reemphasize that that can change. That is only a tentative date as we move forward. So Ms. Winters, if you can start off by bringing up the plan, and I'd like to go through this plan with you, and I, I'll be sharing this as we move through. So the key thing that we are looking at doing is maintaining the connections between our schools and our community and our children that we serve. This is vitally important. Any kind of online learning that we do is only as good as the connections we can make between our classrooms and our teachers and our homes. This will not be easy. The best online learning does not compare to being actually in the classroom. And as I said before, that is our primary goal 
And that is what we're working towards is getting our children back to our classrooms. First slide, Ms. Winters. So the, we wanna show you what our priorities are first and foremost. And again, this was presented to our school board. And the first one is safety. We've been working very diligently and very closely with our local health professionals, local pediatricians, local nurses, county health department, state health department, to begin working on the clearest and safest protocols we can for once we bring the children back home to school. We're also being very responsive to what our families and the community needs are. And so we did send out a survey, and I do appreciate all of you for, for uh, completing that survey, as we are looking at responding to what your needs are. We're also looking at what our start date is. Right now, we are looking to start our online program as scheduled on August 5th, which is a little bit more than two weeks from today. Our other date of August 17th is when we can actually physically come back to school as of right now as per the governor's order. So those two dates are very important to keep in, keep in mind. We wanna maintain our high quality connections to the classroom so it's not just go online and do these things. We want to maintain and make sure that your child has a connection to a teacher at their home school. And we also recognize, and this is extremely important to our district, we've done a lot of work on this in the last five years, but even more so now that the social emotional needs of our, of our students and staff are extremely important. This is a very, very traumatic event that we've been undergoing for the last four and a half months or so. And we recognize that that manifests itself in a lot of different ways. And there are a lot of hurting individuals out in our community and a lot of the children. For many of our children, the safest place that they can come to is our schools. The happiest place that they can come to is our schools. And we wanna make sure that we can meet those needs moving forward. So next slide, please. First thing is safety. This is our first obligation. It's to the health and safety of our entire district, including students, staff, families, and the community that we serve. It's not as simple as saying, children are not really susceptible to the virus. It's also about everyone who comes in contact with those children and whether it is safe to open our schools or not. So we'll be looking very closely at that. And that is actually our first priority that we have moving forward. Our school board spoke with one voice on that last Tuesday, and we will continue to work closely with all of the state, our partners of the state, local, as well as the county to develop our protocols for in-person. Those are developing and they're moving along and we have stocked up on additional cleaning supplies and we are establishing those protocols for each one of those campuses as we move back. But I do wanna emphasize again that when we do return to campus, whenever that is, we want to be very, very cautious in how we do that. It's not gonna be a matter of August 17th, all of the children return to school all at once. We wanna be very, very methodical. We wanna be very strategic in how we return our kids and families to our schools and classrooms. Next slide, please, Ms. Winters. So family and community needs. You can get there. It says returning children to schools at the earliest date safely. Right now, the safest thing we can do at our, our, only, our capacity for returning students to school right now, physically on August 5th is zero. And as that zero will hopefully increase as we move forward and move those kids back into school, but it has to be done safely. And we will adhere to Governor Ducey's executive order that in-person school is delayed until August 17th, 2020. And again, I reemphasize, I'm gonna say this more than once because things do change quite often. That is scheduled or tentative date only on August 17th. August 5th is our start date, all online. There's two different options for our online. You're going to see our online with the intent to stay online for all year, and then online with the intent to return to school. There are two different paths forward to getting back to school. And we're also considering the phased in start for in-person learning. That goes back to what I said a little bit earlier as far as how do we bring children back? And again, do we start with our littles? Do we start with our older children? We're looking at that very closely and how we're going to do that. And we also wanna to continue to look at our August 5th date to retain our high quality personnel, our bus drivers, our custodial staff, our teachers, our paraprofessionals, all of the staff that goes into making schools work. We're going to need all of them once we do return to school. Next slide, please, Ms. Winters. So from the survey, we did get a little bit of information coming back. Part of his survey data indicates over 50% of families would like to begin school on August 5th, 2020. So that is why we are moving forward. There's been some, uh, some questions that have come to me personally that said, well, why don't you just delay school until August 17th? Well, I, I know that there's a lot of anxiety out there about that, but one of the ways of being responsive to our community is recognizing that through that survey that many of our families, half of our families, would like to begin school on August 5th online. Governor Ducey's executive order does not allow school districts to reduce the number of calendar days for students. So our district has to maintain a 180 day student calendar. That would allow us to do that and continue with all the regularly scheduled breaks that we have. 
We will begin August 5th online and allow for fall, winter, and, swap, and spring breaks, and May 26th is the final day of school. And the August 5th start date allows for greater retention of personnel, like we said before. Next slide, please, Ms. Winters. So this gets into the, into the, the meat of the matter right here. High quality connections to our classrooms. Each child will be connected to a grade level site classroom teacher. So for example, if you are a parent of a student at MVP in second grade, and you are enrolled in the online, at least for the first two weeks and even beyond, if you're gonna stay on there um, regularly, you will be connected to the second grade teacher at MVP. And it'll be specifically designed curriculum, online platform to transition seamlessly between online and in-person. We recognize and we understood the feedback that we received during the fourth quarter. It was not ideal. So we listened and we took significant steps to ameliorate the situations that we were seeing to make sure that we have the high quality programs moving forward. There'll also be full special education services provided as we look into the next quarter. And Dr. Alley is going to be joining us here in a little bit and talk about special education services. Many of the questions that I received were about how are we going to do special education? And as many of you know, special education is a, is a challenging um, endeavor, especially online. Too many of our students do not do well when they're in an online environment. We've also chosen a platform that's correlated to Arizona State standards with rigor, relevance, and relationships. And each one of those is as important as the next. We must increase the, the level of rigor. If we can't serve children in, law, in person, we must be able to serve them online to the best of our ability with a high degree of rigor. It also has to be relevant to what they're doing. It has to be connected to once they return to school. And again, all of our planning is based around how do we get kids back to school? So if we start the planning, with the online piece, the, all of the online thinking is, okay, how does this tie in to our classrooms once they come back to school? And of course, the relationships, there is nothing more important in education than the relationships between all of our staff and our families and our children, as well as the relationships that the children can build with one another. I think that the biggest thing that many of our kids have, have been missing and that have even lacking is those relationships with their classmates and what they've missed. And to that end, we have had a very, very rigorous program of instruction for our teaching staff, as well as our paraprofessionals on what it means to be an effective online learner and teacher. So if you look at those steps that we've taken already from the adoption of the curriculum, which I'll get to in a minute, as far and as well as the, the development of the professional, um, the professional development we provide with our teachers, I believe we're going to be in a good place to provide a quality program for our students. Next slide. So this is what you saw in the fourth quarter on the left. Fourth quarter crisis teaching plan. That was not ideal. That was put together in a very, very short amount of time. And for many families, it did work. But for too many families, it did not work. And we recognize that and we've made adjustments. So as you'll see, the difference in the, the compare and contrast here. So in the fourth quarter, the COCSD remote learning platform, our new family friendly platform is going to be much different. You'll still be using the Google Classroom, but you will see a one stop shopping. So instead of having all these various resources, there'll be one site where they can go to. We'll also not have a variety of platforms such as Seesaw, Google Classroom, and Google Slides. It'll be consistent just with Google Classroom and utilizing our curriculum, which is going to be provided through Edgenuity and Let's Go Learn. You'll see, be seeing a demo of those provided here in a little bit. We also had teacher created content using district curriculum. So this, I think, was one of the most challenging, and many, many of our teachers stepped up as far as providing those relevant and rigorous uh, types of activities and curriculum for our students, but it was not as, uh, not as jointed as well as it could have been. It was disjointed in some ways, and so recognizing that, we did adopt Edgenuity as our platform, and we're going to be using that to transition from our online into our in-person learning. During the fourth quarter, there were no grades. We will have grades during our coming, upcoming session. There was optional teacher live and recorded sessions. They were going to be recorded and live, re required and recorded teacher sessions for all of them. So it is not going to be hit or miss. We have extremely high expectations. And last Wednesday, we met with all of our teaching staff and we laid out exactly what those ex expectations are going to be. And we're also going to be continuing those conversations at their site level. There was also no attendance required during the fourth quarter of the crisis teaching. Attendance will be required and will be taken on a daily basis as we move into the next quarter. Next slide, please, Ms. Winters. So what we're going to be using are two different platforms for our main curriculum. The first one is Edgenuity and the other one is Let's Go Learn. And there's, they're a little bit different. They're going to be used in a little bit different ways for meeting the needs of the students. 
So the Pathblazer K-5 comprehensive program includes ELA, which is English, math and supplemental science and social studies. And the My Path, which is for six through eight, includes all a comprehensive curriculum in all subject areas. So again, this is an online platform. We reviewed many platforms to see how relevant they would be, but also how engaging they would be for our kids and families. We convened a task force that was headed up by our administrators, as well as teachers from across the district, who also had students in our schools, who are also parents, to look at what those different platforms were and how specific and good they would be for our um, for our students. And that was adopted on Tuesday night. As you know, it was adopted along with Let's Go Learn on Tuesday night. They're standards-based and skill-based, so they're correlated to Arizona State standards. They're formative and summative and diagnostic assessments available. So this is going to be absolutely key. As we move forward, if you think about it, many of our students will have been out of school close to five months. And many students have been working diligently at home. Other students have not been so much for whatever reasons they are. But we need to determine exactly where these students are at so that we can help them gain their skills. There's going to be a loss for some. There might be a gain for others. But we do anticipate that there will be some remediation that we're going to be needing to do with our students. We also can, took into consideration special education, IEP, adaptive interventions. And that's one of the reasons we're looking at Let's Go Learn. Let's Go Learn is going to be a supplemental program for use with students with IEPs. They'll also have the edgenuity. But our, one of the, the, the key pieces that our, that our special education teachers are doing are working with our gen ed teachers to provide that, that uh, level of instruction that they're going to be needing. And so that's why we've invested in both the edgenuity as well as the Let's Go Learn. It can assess student and classroom progress at the site and district level. So we're going to be monitoring very closely what we're seeing with those. And as you can see, there were significant costs associated with both of those, 140000 for edgenuity and 8000 for, for uh, Let's Go Learn. And that's uh, funding that we took from our CARES Act dollars, which were specifically designed to provide those additional resources for districts. And we're also looking at creating that seamless transition between remote and in-person learning. I'm going to emphasize that again. The goal of this district is return students to school at the earliest date possible. So you're going to be hearing that a lot as we go forward. And for some, it may mean they'd like to stay out a little bit longer. And that was one of the key questions that we've had from people. If I start in the online, can I go back to class? And absolutely, that was a requirement. That is a mandate, not only from me, but also from our school board. They want that level of flexibility because there are levels of concern across our community that range from just sending a child back to school immediately to perhaps waiting until the fall, November, December, or whenever they are ready. So everything we're doing is planning around making that transition as seamless as possible. So as you can also look at the model summary, online starts. So there's two different options right, right now for our online education piece. One is with the intent to re return to campus at the earliest possible date. The other time, the other uh, choice is for the full time online. So this will expand from pre or through K through eight and pre-K um, through eight special education for both of these. They'll both start on August 5th, online with the intent to return to the homeroom as soon as safely as possible. The other will start with the intent to remain online for an extended period of time. This will be five days a week if you, for both. If you're online with the intent to return to campus, you'll be enrolled at a specific campus location. So if you are enrolled at Oak Creek School, you'll be continue to, to uh, be enrolled at Oak Creek School. If you would like to stay full-time online, you'll be enrolled in our AOI, which is an Arizona Online Institute, which is our ability to serve online for an extended period of time. For the online start with the, turn, with the return to campus, you'll see online instruction until return to school with a classroom teacher. On the other side, you'll see synchronous teacher-led instruction and asynchronous, which means recorded learning throughout the academic year with a COCSD teacher. You'll see accommodations, supports, and IEP services in both. If you need devices, and this is something that, that we are very cognizant of and something that I think our district did extremely well during the closure, is we distributed nearly 300 of our devices out for families that did not have any. Now our devices are fine, but they're only as good as the internet that we can provide. So we have just received a grant through the Forest Fees Management Association to purchase hotspots for those families that do not have internet. And there are significant numbers of our families that do not have internet. And that leaves too many behind. So we will address that as soon as we know how many of our students will actually need this. This is a district adopted online curriculum and utilizes previously adopted curriculum during the in-person schooling. Again, that creates the situation we can bring these kids back in as seamlessly as possible back into our schools. So that is what was presented to the school board and that gives you the, on, the, the basic outlines of what our online platform is going to be. But I would like to answer some questions here that we've received prior. And then I would like for our principals to have a have a uh, short conversation with you. And I would also like Dr. Alley, our special education director, have some um, question and answer time. 
So the first question that I'd like to talk about is, is the real elephant in the room. And I'm just going to read directly from, from what I received. It says, how should households with both parents working full-time jobs plan to set up, monitor, and assist young learners during an online class five days a week? It appears to leave the option of either leaving your career or allowing your child's education to suffer. There was probably three or four questions that were along that similar vein right there. And I get it. I understand. It cannot be easy for too many of our homes where the parents need to work and how they're going to educate their children at the same time. I've done much reading and I've done much listening to our community out there and what those needs are. Right now, all we have is our online learning component. I do not have the legal authority to open these schools back up to bring the children back into the schools right now. When I do, I will do that in the safest and earliest possible manner. I don't have an easy answer for this right now. We're still under the governor's order. But my suggestion to all of you is to first to reach out to your teachers, reach out to your principals, and let us work with you as far as we can and as much as we can in assisting you with that. Another question is if a student is enrolled in our online and plans to remain online until the families feel it is safe to return to school, can they return to the originally enrolled campus at any time? And the short answer and very easy answer is yes. That is what we have planned to set up. Another question, my, son, my sons attend MVP. If we do online schooling for both, would they lose their placement in school? Another short answer is no. I think that was one of the biggest concerns that I've heard about if they go into the online, how is that going to happen? And we will maintain those spots. We want to maintain those connections from the classrooms and the schools and to the families. And there's only one way to do that is maintain their enrollment at their school of origin is how we're treating them. Another question, what happens if I haven't been able to get internet service at my address? Only Sparklight says they can provide services at my address, but they are not sending out texts for new installs. How does this affect my children? So we did work out, we did reach out numerous times to both the county and the internet providers, local uh, private providers around our county to see what they could do to help us during the closure. And I will tell you that I did not have great success. I wish I could say that I had much, much greater success, but it did not work out that way. We did get some indications that they would like to provide lower in, literal costs on the internet, but it never did really materialize. That's why we're going the direction with the hotspots being provided through the grant that we received. There are portions of our community down at Lower Oak Creek Estates is one, there are different parts of the Verde Villages that they don't even have the ability, they're still on coax. So their ability to get internet is very, very limited without those hotspots and those mobile internet devices. That's why we are planning going that direction. We we'll able to purchase plans. Kathy Epperson, who's our technology director, has been very diligent looking at those plans as well as how many hotspots we'll be able to provide. So if you need a hotspot, and I assume that most of you that are on this tonight probably do not need a hotspot, but if you know families that are in need of that for educational services, please let them contact us and let us know that they need it. The teachers will be asking that question when they're reaching out the phone call. Some of you may have already been contacted by your teachers, and that should be one of the questions that they're asking you. It is an extremely worrying concern that I have. I do not want to leave any child behind. I do not want to, leave or to create more inequities in our system. But all we can do is strive to get better in that area. And that is what we are doing. Another question, there is, an, is there an option to do full on-time learning? That is correct, yes. So this is, question here is about students with disabilities and we have spent much time. Dr. Alley will be speaking about this in just a little bit. And she's our director of special services. But here it says, what about children with autism or other disabilities? As I said before, many of our children that we serve in our community are, have the greatest challenges. And they will not be left behind in the plan that we are doing. We are constantly talking about what we can do to meet their needs. As a matter of fact, Dr. Alley met with the governor's office and we have received the initial indications that we may receive waivers to serve our highest special needs children in person. So we are looking at what our capacity will be to serve their needs. And she'll be speaking that in just a little bit. Another question, what are the requirements when students return to school? Will masks be required and will they get all extra classes like STEM, PE, art, and Spanish? The purpose of this town hall today is not to talk about what the reopening will look like. We will be presenting our reopening plan at our August 4th board meeting, which is a little bit over, actually it's uh, two weeks from tomorrow. We'll be giving the details out on how that will look as we move forward. 
Same question. So what safety measures are being put into place? Those will be addressed as well. The sanit extra sanitation protocols that we are working on along with our health departments. Um, great question here. It says, will the district have preschool open prior to schools opening? Or will they remain closed until in-person classes open? We are striving. There's very few things more important than early childhood education, in my view, of how schools should be. And we're working very diligently in getting our preschools open to serve not just the students that we have in our district, but also for the communities in the greater whole. We understand that preschool is probably the most formative time, actually not probably, is the absolute most vital and important time in the growth of children. So we are working on that and we're actually meeting on that tomorrow afternoon to discuss how that is going to look and we're striving for that. Another question, we are leaning toward our boys starting online and hopefully returning to campus Oak Creek School after Christmas break. If we go this route, will their online teacher be the same or they would have had once returning to campus. Um, so one of the things that we're looking at, we're looking at our capacity to serve. And as we move forward, um, if, the, if the closures go for an extended period of time, which, which I hope they do not, how do we continue to, to, to bring kids back in so they have that connection with the teacher? That was going to be challenging with the numbers of, of staff that we have as we're looking at these, if perhaps they're staying online for a long period of time. So we're continuing to look at that and that is a consideration. A few more questions I've received since then. It says, is the first few weeks remote learning only about three hours in the AM? Well, that's going to depend a lot. A lot of what we've chosen um, for online platforms can be self-directed. Now that's going to be challenging by age. And, and one of the things that, that keeps me awake at night more than anything else is thinking about our kindergartners and how school is going to look. Again, I go back to the, to the, the point that the best online learning does not take the place of good in-person teaching. So how do we make it as meaningful and relevant to the families as possible? Kindergarten is going to be a challenge with that. I will not, not sugarcoat that at all. How can you expect a kindergarten to sit down at a computer for three hours? And is that really what kindergarten is supposed to be all about? To me, kindergarten is about socialization. It's about understanding how school works. It's about building relationships. And it's about growing a genuine love for learning that we can all have as they go through their experience. So. I would not say the three hours in the AM, I think that's gonna look a little bit different for each grade level. And you'll be hearing more about that from your teachers as well as your campuses in the coming days. Another question is how will IEP services be provided? You'll hear more about that. What are we doing with kids with IEPs? Again, you'll hear more about that. And there is more on high need special education classes. So we'll get to the rest of the questions as we go. And I do encourage you, if you have more questions, we are compiling all of these and we'll be putting out a frequently asked questions sheet in the next couple of days with all the questions that you might have here, I think it'd be a little bit unwieldy to just open this up right now, but we'll be very responsive to all those questions. And again, you can also call your campus administrator, ask your teacher, or you can even call me yourself. I'd be more than happy to speak with you at any time. So Trish, can you bring up a demo, the demo of what Edgenuity looks like? I'd like for you all to see just a little bit of what this platform will look like when you do see it. And each child will have their own special login and is connected to their platform. So you want me to show the Google Classroom or you want me to show Edgenuity, Edgenuity video? Google Classroom first and then the Edgenuity video, correct. Yeah. Thank you. So as you'll see this, this will be done on a daily basis as far as the lesson plan, the daily attendance sheet. Now we must keep track of the attendance records. And we've been working closely with a partner district down in Dysart to follow their protocols and how they've done this. They've done this for a number of years. So we have taken their lead in many ways. This will be documented by the families and the parents and then submitted to the teachers electronically in some way and they'll be kept at the district office or at the school site level in case anyone from the Department of Education would like to see them. So the language arts week one, Day one, August 5th, math. So it is basically one stop. There is only one place that a student would need to go to to find all the resources that they'll have at their fingertips. And you'll see this is for kindergarten. Now, if you can show the short video on what ingenuity looks like, Tricia, I'd appreciate that.
These are sound. Thank you. Hi, you know me. I'm the kid who sometimes struggles in school. I used to have a really frustrating time, but things got a lot better when my teacher introduced me to Pathblazer. Pathblazer intervention software really helped me and the other kids in my class who struggle with math or reading. In Pathblazer, my teacher started me out with a short test called a screener. It found my top performance level. Then I took another test called a diagnostic that found the holes in what I know and built a set of lessons just for me. The lessons helped me fill those holes and catch up to grade level. Pathblazer lessons are full of fun video, audio, and animation. And it was really easy for me and my classmates to learn how to use the program. Pretty cool, don't you think? Best of all, Pathblazer grabs and holds our attention and keeps us focused and wanting to learn. And guess what? It really works. My teacher can make reports to help keep track of my progress, adjust my lessons, and keep me heading in the right direction. At the rate I'm improving, I know I'll be way closer to grade level than I was when the year began. Pathblazer, it's learning accelerated. So the Pathblazer is for the K-6, K-5. There's also the 6 through 8 component. So it'll be adjusted to each individual student's level. The videos that you'll see, uh, some of them will be coming from Ingenuity, but there will also be the, the videos that are created by the teachers. Again, those connections. This is not just a fire and forget program where kids go online and, and there's no teacher involvement. That would not be good for our students. That would not be good for our schools. So that's what we're looking at moving forward. Um, Across the board, if you would like to look at the, the AOI, as far as the full-time, there'll be another meeting tomorrow night on those that would like to do the full-time AOI, if they feel as though that's the best choice for your child. So I encourage you to take a look at that as well. Right now, I'd like for each one of our principals and Dr. Alley to just talk a little bit about the things that they've been working on, the things that they're excited about in the school year. And uh, we're gonna start with Ms. Rhoda from Mountain View Prep. Are you ready, Ms. Rhoda? You're always smiling, I appreciate that. Yes, thank you, Mr. King. Um, thank you guys. Thank you parents and families for joining us. I see some familiar names and I see a lot of families here from Mountain View Preparatory, families that I miss. Um, I just want to say, and I know that if you hear my robo calls, you know how much I miss seeing all of you and I miss seeing all of our students. And the biggest thing that I long for is to have you all back on our campus. Our campus is beautiful. Our garden is growing. Um, it's just missing the kids. And what I'm excited for when we return is that um, we'll have a mountain bike track for those kiddos that are on the mountain bike team um, to get to ride and um, just be active and have some fun. I know that over the summer I've been, and all of the administration have been working on um, figuring out what's best and what's safe for our students. And I know that this is the right path for now. And I know that MVP teachers have the best interest of all of our students at heart. They miss all of you and they're gonna do whatever they can to make this learning experience a great one. So I look forward to hearing from you. Please reach out to me. Our offices are open for phone calls. Give us a call, send me an email and look forward to calls from your teachers soon. They'll be getting their rosters here next week and they'll be reaching out to all of you to make those connections. So I miss you all and I'm glad to see all of you here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rhoda. Mr. Schumacher. All right, good evening, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, all right. Well. Thank you uh, families for joining us tonight, uh, especially CCS families. I also see a couple of you out there, great families. And so um, look forward again to that opportunity where we can get back on campus. Uh, as usual, it's been a busy summer at CCS. We've uh, had a number of teachers win grants through things like the Fiesta Bowl or Donors Choose. So there's been a lot of work going on, beautifying campus, murals going up, complete transformations of the K2 area. Our custodial and maintenance staffs have taken great steps to enhance safety throughout campus. You'll know that. Uh, you'll notice that if you come to the office right away. 
Um, so we are really spending a lot of time in isolation, but working hard to really just transform um, CCS so that it's uh, the place you remember when you return, but also uh, a new campus to explore. And looking at silver linings, you know, I know for us, many of the hurdles we faced in the past, uh, things like a very wide open campus exposed to the elements with multiple pickup places uh, and drop off points. At this point, looking back and, and, and looking forward, I really see those as, as great advantages for our campus. And so it's funny how uh, many of those areas that we've talked about over the last two years and working to mitigate um, now become a great opportunity for our campus. And so um, we're actively reviewing ways to utilize those spaces, uh, those newly uncovered strengths, we'll call them, um, really create a, a lot of possibilities. And so um, what I'm gonna say is, is just use your imagination. Uh, we are, we're certainly getting creative um, with, those, with that, that that space and how we can bring kids back gradually. So just want to say, you know, I know as a, as a pseudo parent to your children and, and of course a, a parent to my own who will be starting kindergarten this year in our district, um, getting this as, as right as possible, both online and eventually in person is, is immensely important to me. So, you know, this is, this is something I know we're all in to get uh, together, but, but please recognize that I, I take um, this very personally Kids have to be in classrooms and have to be in classrooms or some sort of um, instructional um, format on campus. Um, but we have to make sure that those classrooms are safe for everyone in our learning community. It's not just what happens within the walls or with outside the walls of CCS, but it's, it's how that ripples out into our community. You know, we're a community school and, and I recognize that. Finally, I'll wrap up here, but I do wanna take an opportunity just to put this bug in your ear. Uh, many of you may have heard, and if you didn't, uh, we did lose our um, registrar and, and attendance secretary, Rhonda Baker, very um, quickly and, and, and just horrible, really, uh, over a very few period of weeks. Um, and so just please be patient with us as we look to find a solid replacement. We're hoping that's going to happen sooner than later. Uh, we will have the office staffed from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day uh, this week and next, but there will be some volunteers in there kind of mitigating some of uh, the, the personnel trainings and, and things that we have going on. So be patient with them. Um, know that I'm always accessible. I will get back to you very, very fast if you send me an email call. Um, so uh, just work with us as we work to find the best person to replace her because that, that's a critical linchpin between us um, and our learning community as a whole. Finally, uh, just look to hear from an email from me. Get to, to receive an email blast uh, on an open house and uh, when you can expect to hear from your teacher uh, within the coming week. Remember, once again, we're a community school, so please don't uh, hesitate to reach out if you need anything at all. We may not have the answers, but uh, we can certainly work together to find the best ones out there. Thanks, everybody, and I'm always available for questions if you have them. And as always, Ms. very well said, Mr. Schumacher. Ms. Vaca from Dr. Daniel Bright. Are you with us? I'm here. Right. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for coming tonight. Um, Ms. Erickson is on here with me as well. And um, in very unfortunate circumstances, DDB, we find ourselves in, in actually a pretty good place after COVID-19 when we return. We only had one teacher move out of state, so all of our staff will be back next year. Uh, we've added a position to fifth and sixth grade because we've grown. Um, we have a brand new teacher in that position. And then we had Mr. Rell move from the middle grades down to the elementary level. So we also hired a new teacher um, out of Glendale up there to help Ms. Edwards teach math. Um, our staff has been meeting throughout the summer. A group of us have been really um, studying um, and working with stress and how it relates to things like this. Many of our conversations have been around how to support families coming back in. This is a very unprecedented time. We haven't been able to really predict anything um, that's gone on with COVID-19. We all want it to go away very quickly. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case right now. So we're working together to um, try to figure out how our schedules can be maximized so students aren't in the hallway together, um, how we can use our grounds as helping educate our students when they come back. Um, a big thing is Arturo, John, and Maria have been painting um, every single day. <laughs> so we are, we are fresh and new inside the building and the parking lot. Um, but a big part of 
what we've been working on is how to support our families and how to work with our community to help support our families. So if there is anyone out there, I know I've already heard from many families, um, email, um, text, phone calls, all those things. Um, the teachers have been fantastic. Please reach out to your teacher. Like uh, the other two before said to me, um, or said to all of us is our, our teachers are really working on how to get back in the classroom and you should be hearing from them soon. So as we begin to start to think about our reopening plan, also think about your family and how you can help um, provide feedback for us into moving forward. And I truly appreciate all the communication that has gone on between home and the school. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Ms. Vaca. Ms. Prasad, Bow Creek School. So good evening, everyone. Um, shout out to my Roadrunner families. I was um, happy to see a lot of you here. And I know you've been emailing me over the past few weeks with questions and throughout the summer. Um, I will continue to do a video, a weekly video updating Roadrunners and their families. I will say I've got uh, meetings scheduled with our PTO. We're looking at sustaining and building our PTO and continuing that um, and supporting our families. We are in a time of great <laughs> like fear and anxiety and worry, but we have to look at how we come together and through our strong parent partnerships and our relationships in the community, I hope to continue to build that. We did get a grant, um, a school safety grant to have a counselor who we, um, I have hired and looking at how we can hold some more parent nights for some things going on as we progress in to that online setting or if that sustains or how it looks when we do reopen back. Um, I do know that there are families with lots of concerns and we do need to have some of those programs available for families into the evenings. So I look forward to supporting you all and our students as we come back into the online setting. I'm available, you can always email and you can call the school and just know that we are here for you and especially welcoming our kids back in. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Prasad. Dr. Alley. Good evening, everybody. Um, if I haven't met you, my name is Trish Alley and I am the Director of Special Education Services for the school district. Um, I wanna thank you all for being here tonight. I'm also a parent. Um, of two kiddos in um, COCSD, and uh, they are very eager to be getting back to school as well. Uh, but I want you all to know that um, IEPs, if your student has an IEP, services will be offered and provided as soon as the school year starts, meaning even online. So even though we're not opening up um, brick and mortar, even just online, those services will be offered and provided. Now I know that um, Mr. King got quite a few questions and as we all know, if you have a child with a disability, everybody's needs are very different. Um, and so we are gonna have to approach each and every one of our students um, at a, on an individual basis uh, because of their individual and unique needs. So um, expect to get a phone call from either the special education teacher of your child um, and or their service providers. Um, and during that call, you'll expect to get a couple questions, you know, just A, how, how are they doing in the areas which uh, you feel that maybe they've maintained, maybe they've progressed a little, or maybe they've regressed. They're gonna be asking some of those questions because we'll be looking to you to see how they've been doing over the last five months and deciding, you know, what would be the most appropriate time to, or, appropriate skills to be focusing on. Um, so also, uh, Mr. King talked about, um, you know, temporary, there might be a temporary plan. We all know that there are um, IEP goals that are just not possible to do online. Uh, so we'll be talking with you to see in what, in what creative ways can we work with your student um, on those specific needs. And if there, uh, we, we have been talking, working with the Arizona Department of Education and also the governor's office, and they are in full understanding that we do have some students that no matter how creative we get, no matter how big our efforts are, the online platforms just are not going to be beneficial to them based on the significance of their disability. So we are looking to the governor's office for possibly some 
uh, flexibility in that to work maybe one on one with some of our students. Um, there is going to be criteria set um, if this flexibility does go through uh, through the Department of Education. We'll be looking to that to see which students would benefit um, from this very specialized opportunity. Um, for other students, um, we will have um, our special education teachers are going to be co teaching with their general education teachers. So in those uh, Google Classrooms, uh, your specific student might have something a little bit different in their classroom that nobody else can see. And that might be a link to Let's Go Learn. That might be a list of accommodations. Uh, maybe they are, some of their assignments are getting reduced or um, there might be some special Zoom classes for your student in order to help her, um, support them in some of these online models. So we're, we've been working all summer just doing a lot of different trainings, coming up with a lot of different ideas is, and we still know that there's going to be a lot of individual uh, conversations uh, with, with everyone. So if you um, should be expecting those phone calls uh, probably that first week before school, if you have not received a phone call um, by about the middle of the first week um, after the August 5th start date, please email me. Uh, my email address is on the website uh, because we might just not have your um, current contact information. We don't want to miss anybody, but with everyone out there, we might not be able to get a hold of you. So if you don't hear from your service coordinator, please email me and uh, we will connect you with that person to make sure that that um, communication is, is uh, being had. So one of the, the pieces that I'm pushing out to all of our service coordinators is communication. The more communication we can have with you and you can have with us, I think the more um, support we can give to all of our students with disabilities. So we look forward to hearing from you and having those discussions and, um, and start off the year uh, uh, the best we can in supporting everybody in the district. Great, thank you, Dr. Allen. So there's been a lot of work that's been done. There'll be a lot of work that still needs to get done. As we grow into this, I do ask for your patience. And I do ask for your grace in many of these areas that we're working on. We are not alone in these challenges. School districts across the state, and we are working very, very closely with many school districts, especially here locally, Clarkdale and Mingus, especially as our partner districts in finding these solutions to the problems that we're going to be facing coming up. I do want to give you some updated information as far as what the next steps you can expect to see. The first thing is tomorrow night at 6 p.m. There is the full-time online information meeting. So that Zoom has been sent out and we will send that out again to you. And that will cover exactly what the expectations are going to be if you are choosing to stay full-time online. You'll get all that information that you need. All the questions you've submitted, we're going to be putting those into an FAQs that we'll have out by the end of the week. So those will be posted as well on our Facebook page as well as on our website. On 8-4, that is our next board meeting, we'll be presenting the reopening plan as we have, um, as we look towards the reopening. Again, our emphasis and everything that we're doing and everything that we are speaking and thinking about is how do we get our children back to school safely at the earliest possible date. So I thank you all for coming tonight. And again, if you have any further questions, please, please send those to either your building principal or to me, and we'll work on getting you those answers moving forward. So thank you all very much and you have a good evening. Bye-bye.